Hey, we're looking forward to this episode, I trust you are as well, where we cover scenario-based training and how it is absolutely in the Word of God through types and shadows from Old Testament to New Testament. I can't wait for you to hear this episode. Hello, everybody. Here we are. Another R and R. It's great to have you with us today, Rick. Great to have you with. Hello, Rick. Hello, Rick. Great to have you with us today, and uh, being together on Remnant Revealed. It's always yeah, a great time. Keep knocking them out. Keep knocking them out. Touching lives. Yep. Uh, don't forget to hit the bell. Subscribe. Send us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Trust that this these are really helping. Touching your heart, touching your life. And, and folks are doing the thumbs up, which is really yeah. good. So make oh, sure yeah. that you keep doing Big that. Big thumbs up. Yeah, please and, do. And uh, we're getting some comments, but we could use more comments. Start discussions. Always. Ask questions. Yeah. Do those things. Right? Yeah. I mean, I appreciate people saying, hey, great episode. Right? right. That's awesome. Right. It lets us know that people are watching. But uh, shoot us a question, comment, suggestion. Yeah, we hear all the time that people are watching. Oh, yeah. And really enjoying them. And that oh, it's yeah. helping them. They wish they had had them. Uh, when they started their career and things like that, but we don't see the, uh, we don't really see as many people as tell us that we don't actually see the numbers. Yeah. Uh, so it'd be yep. good if we could see that. I think it'd change our, should change the algorithm a little bit. So. Yeah. And you know, like we always say, we just want to get in front of as many hearts as possible. One right. thing I do know that helps. We just saw it off of an episode sometime back which was on the uh, Survivor Story right. episode, Tragedy to Triumph, yeah, uh, and talking about the National Law Enforcement Memorial and whatnot, is some folks posted that episode on their social media platforms for their followers That's right. to watch. and it did kick that up. Boy, that helps yeah. tremendously. Yeah. So why not just drop the link every week or whenever we do these, yeah. throw them onto your social media. You don't even have to say anything. Just throw them on there and let people see them or yeah. watch them or do whatever. Just post. Yeah. You want to put a good... Facebook Word of encouragement, or Instagram, that's fine. something like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, so that would be good, and that helps most definitely. Uh, yeah. I just got back from hearing from folks who are watching the uh, the channel, and that was over in southwestern Illinois. Oh wow! Went over there. I was invited over there uh, by our good friend and faithful follower, watcher of the podcast, uh, brother Ike over there. Okay. Uh, Ike, I've talked about before. You'll yeah. remember I talked about went over to the Spoon River Valley Spoon FOP River Lodge Valley. for memorial service. I guess it'd be a year ago now, probably. Yeah. And, I think um, so. Yeah. But Ike invited me back over to uh, participate. Now, this is really cool. It was to participate at what they were calling the Blessing of the Squads. How about that? Have you heard of that? So I, I have not. I've heard of blessing of the badge. badges. Yeah, yeah, where they do ceremonies sure. and bless the badges of the new officers, the new recruits, <clears throat> yep. those kinds of things. Yep. So, this was blessing of the squads, and it was at a place called the Bald Knob Cross. <laughs> the Bald Knob Cross. I know it sounds crazy, yeah, but it's a real deal. And the Bald Knob Cross of Peace is what it's called. So now, listen. we're going to hear about the Bald Knob. Cross today. Well, what I thought was cool was uh, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, went over there, hung out with our uh, our uh, fellow sisters and brothers from Illinois, okay. Illinois State FOP. FOP. Shout out to all, right. all of them. Uh, Shout Chris, out to you, Chris, which is their state president for Illinois. We also awesome. had sisters and brothers down from Chicago. Drove all the way down, the from, way Chicago down from Chicago to southwestern Illinois near wow. the state line of Missouri and and uh, Kentucky and. And uh, they came down there with a food trailer, helped feed everybody. For real. Which was awesome. Thank but, you for doing that. That's yeah, awesome. very much so. And here's what was cool. So they were doing this. This is the first time ever they did it. And they wanted to do a blessing of the squads. And they just put it out. And they invited officers throughout that tri-state region, Illinois, Missouri, Kentucky, or even further, Indiana, right. um, to uh, participate <clears throat> and uh, several officers and agencies sent their officers in their squad cars, squad vehicles. And this the the cross of peace there, I didn't know what to expect, but you get there. This thing is, maybe we can put a photo or two in the uh, video here, but is probably 10 to 12 stories tall. I mean, it's, really? it's massive. And it's on top of this 
this major hill, and you, knob. and you can see it from miles all around. I'm just looking at an information sheet. It is. It can be seen for 7,500 <clears throat> square miles. Get out of here. So where we were, we could look over into Missouri from the top of the really? hill. Really? Yeah. So have you ever seen the big one that's on uh, Interstate 40 going to Asheville, you know that. Yep. Re- is that like there's that? one there, and then there's another big one on I-70 when you get just toward, giving uh, my mind to reference Effingham, Illinois. Yeah. There's a big cross there. This I think is even bigger than those. Wow! And now listen, this is what's interesting: is the work to build this cross started in 1937. No kidding. And they had their first Easter sunrise service. In 1937 at this location, there were 250 people in attendance. Now, from this, they wanted to build this cross, and they started raising funds. And the groundbreaking uh, for the cross was held in conjunction with the 1959 Easter service. Okay? Yeah. (laughs) So think about that. And in 1969, from 1953 to 1963, is how long it took him to build it. The cross was completed in 1963 when the last of over 900 heavy gauge steel panels with a bright white porcelain veneer was affixed to the framework. No kidding. So it uh, can be seen for 7,500 square miles after it's illuminated with 40,000 watts of lighting. Wow. It's it's remarkable. Uh, it's a great thing. And one of the things that they do there is they have what they do an annual event called the Blessing of the Jeeps. Yeah. So the Jeep clubs, they all bring their Jeeps, hundreds have, of them. Yeah. They put them at the foot of this cross and they do a blessing no thing. Way. They do a blessing of the bikes. So a bunch of sickle groups, motorcycles and everything all go into this. So okay. this year they did the blessing of the squads. It was uh, coordinated and hosted by the Illinois State FOP Auxiliary, which are family okay. members of officers that wanted to host this. This is their first time ever. Uh, I got invited over there in my role as the national chaplain for the sure. national FOP. Yeah. Uh, went over and uh, I stood with my brother, uh, Chaplain Dan, who is the state FOP chaplain for Illinois. Okay. And we did this, uh, this event called the Blessing of the Squad. So picture this. You have hundreds of marked police vehicles at the foot of the cross. And then we stood and really did a discussion, but also a prayer vigil. One of the key things that I pointed out um, was that uh, I really traveled all that way uh, to really focus on praying for God's blessing on the people who are in those squads. Right. 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 That's who really needs the blessing, (laughs) you know, more than anything else. Now. Our brother Ike there, he yes, sent me back was. with some gifts. Oh, really? So he said to tell Chris that he said hello, and he got us because he knows we've talked about hunting, camo, oh, yeah. turkey hunting um, on here. And so Check he sent out. you a uh, hat as Look well. Look that, really? Let me remove that. So you could actually put oh, a man. hat on for the first time ever in the history of the podcast. Yeah. Well, we won't be I'm doing gonna, that. I'm, <laughs> yeah. Why not? Well, Crush down your hair there a little yeah, bit. You'll be we, all right. No, it's enough to have the... Uh, but you can see the cross there. Yeah. And it's hard to see because it's camo, but it says bald knob cross on there. All right. Well, and, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, he sent it as this. a gift for you. That's, you know, that's... I'm going to do this know, for the first time. Please do that and put a ball cap on. All right. You can do it. There oh, you go. Oh, man. There you go. Now, you man, might have to I'm adjust have it. To adjust it because you know, it's a big bit. head, but... To, um, oh, oh, I have a big head. So here, if you can, oh, if we can show this shirt, but they look sent this that. to That's a nice Illinois one. FOP on there. Yeah. But then look at this on the back. You can see the blessing, blessing of the, the squads, squads and the cross awesome. in there. Isn't that yeah, awesome? That is awesome. So a big shout out to all those folks. Very a great hospitality. Really enjoyed our time over there. Thank um, you so much for this wonderful, thank you. absolutely amazing hat. Thank you very much. And uh, so you put it on. That's all right. We hey, don't I put it on. You don't want to mess up your hair. It's okay. No, it's it's. So it's, uh, I said you were yuppified. So, um, so now with these hats, so uh, he did that because you remembered us talking about hunting and everything. Yeah, I love to hunt. I also just got a message and a picture from a good friend of ours up in Wisconsin, old Pete up there, yeah. who sent a picture. He said you guys were talking about turkey, turkey hunting. Hunt. And he sent me a picture of 
a, a tom that he had harvested, but it, it was a double bearded tom. That was an amazing. Now, picture. have you heard of that before? I've heard of it before, but I've never actually seen uh, one. So, if people don't know, I've never actually tom killed one or seen one, but I have heard of it. Before. Has what's called a beard. Yeah, right. Yep. Out, really, out of their chest right. area. And this was a double bearded uh, turkey tom, yeah. uh, that he had hunted. Now, he shared with me that's his 24th tom, but his first double bearded one. Yeah. So I'll check with Pete. Maybe sometime we could put it on the episode if he wants yeah. to show it off. Yeah, it's a cool Yeah, it's a cool turkey. Yeah, it's neat that hearing back from too. folks watching the channel, watching the show, and uh, sharing some of the things that they're doing and going on as well so absolutely awesome so this event at the cross was very cool you know one of the things that i pointed out is what talk about all the time which is reminding all those officers that it was by no accident but to really focus them back on we're standing at the foot of the cross that's right and that we all have an equal need at the foot of the cross and then reminding them that god said we also have equal value at the foot of that cross so even though your blessing the squad cars are blessing the badges or bless really the human is right. the direction for the blessing that's right because if we're not careful we'll use some of those things almost superstitiously right? that's right almost like a rabbit's foot they, or a let, shoe or a horseshoe or that's not really what the you, blessing of god that's what i used cross. to do yeah Oh, when, I, okay. when I first yeah, come on and I was a newer officer, I never passed up, up an opportunity. Well, this is one thing I know. I've never found officers pass up an opportunity when somebody says, can I pray for you? Right. Because they'll say, I'll take everything yeah, I can absolutely. get. Right? Especially in the hell we're in today. That's right. Yeah. Never pass up an opportunity for the blessing of things, right. blessing of the badge or those kinds of things, yeah. because that's the way that I thought about it. Yeah. Almost like a rabbit's foot. Right. I can use a little yeah, extra use luck. Use a little luck, yeah. Right? And really, um, you know, that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about there, which was I didn't want to negate the blessing of the squad. No, so no, that's no, awesome. no, That's not what we're saying. That's not, no. the, that's, not, that's not it. But the power and the purpose of focusing on God's blessing for the people and right. the hearts that are in those squads. That's right. Because those cars mean nothing. No, it's an inanimate object. It's, it's the, the human being that's behind the wheel of that car. That's exactly right. That's the most important. The car has no life of its own. But it's important to the officers because that's our office. Right. Right. People forget that. Yeah. You know, you work in a cubicle or you work in an office somewhere. That right. is the office of the, of of police, the police officer. officer. Yeah. The officers right. out on patrol, they don't have an office that they go back to and do yeah. their work out of. They do it all out of that car. <clears throat> and so... It does carry great significance for them, but I want those officers to remember that God is focused on them. That's right. Right? That's right. Uh, I have a friend of mine doing the chaplaincy thing. I, I think I was sharing with you before. You go to a lot of events, you know, and invariably there's food, so they always ask the chaplain to bless the food. Right. Right? And I have a friend of mine from Tennessee. He always makes fun of me because he says, Snyder blesses everything but the food when I do the prayer. That's right. That's right. But I always point out that the by the food being there and the hands that have prepared it, it is right. a blessing from God, right? right? Uh, but really focusing them back on giving thanks. Yeah. It's really an opportunity to give thanks for the blessings from God. Right. Um, and then also praying for the individuals there. Sure. So I just think it's a great thing to do. I think sometimes we can fall into that trap of treating some of the some of the blessings of God as a as more of a re- religiosity kind of perspective yeah. or religious yeah. perspective. Yeah. Which, Vain repetition would be the two words the Bible uses and that Jesus used where we just get into a repetitive yeah but it's really in vain because you have no connection to it. It's just something you've heard you should do or has been passed down from one generation to another. You just kind of do it, but That's right. your heart's not in it. That's right. Right? You have a form. I think one of those scriptures you and I have used before, you have a form of godliness, but you deny the power that's actually a part of the There's godliness. There's the key. That really changes your life. As I've been sharing with you for, you know, going into this year, that has really been the thing that the Lord has placed on my heart, which is this issue and this topic of power. Yeah. Yeah. Don't deny the power of God. And I think a lot of times we fall into that trap. 
even for officers who say, well, I believe there's a God. I yeah. believe in God. I yeah. go to church, all these other things. But I don't see them walking out the power of God or well, that, walking in the power of God. That's why you and I use the the phrase a lot in conversation. It's not religion. It's relationship. That's right. It's not just about these little things we do and icons we use. It's about having a deep relationship with God. Yeah. That, that's the beauty. I was in another nation not too long ago and, and, um, and talking with one of the guides there in that nation, and and he happens to be a, um, you know, a, a believer in faith and in what they believe in. He said, you know, I've watched you Christians that come here for a very long time. So this was not a Christian believer. No. Okay. And he said, um, all the things that we do. He said, honestly, I'm kind of jealous. Mm-hmm. He said, all the things that we do are more duty based repetitive but duty based but when i watch you guys or listen to you guys and when i he said i listen to you pray i listen i watch what you do and he said there's a love not only given from you but a love that you walk in and expect from your god mm mm-hmm. mhm that that really kind of makes me jealous. That's the power. Because I don't feel, we, we're not taught that. Right. We, we're taught it's duty, you do this, you do it this way, and and because you do it this way, and everybody has to do it this way, um, that's just what we do. It so, works. Right, it works. And so- You got to um, work to achieve it. Right. Which and, is different. And it is different. And, that, and I said to him, I said, well- that is the the difference between religion and relationship. Yeah. Um, nobody wants to be married to somebody that just does what they do out of duty. Out of obligation. Out of obligation. You know, I love it when my wife comes up and wraps her arm around my arm or looks at me or says, that's a big muscle, baby. You're my man, right? Mm-hmm. Then... Then she just does everything in our in our home or for me out of a duty. Mm-hmm. Well, I got it done. I did it. I fulfilled my obligation today. Right. Whole different ball game. Right. So, coppers do this all the time. I mean, police officers they do. If I was going to liken well, it to something, it. yeah, mean, let's do that. Do you uh, do you want an officer that's just serving out of obligation? No. That shows up and and just does it by the book and says. This is what's prescribed for me to do in this situation. Here you go. Here's your ticket. Have a nice day kind of approach. Or uh, here's your case number yeah. and move on. Or do you want an officer that cares? That cares, right? I mean, you think about it. That is the big move. And ultimately, when you talk about the challenges going on in policing, folks want a relationship with the officer and vice versa. Right. They want to know their officer that patrols their neighborhood, right? Yeah. And they want that relational aspect of policing, not this formal fake, um, right. you know, just the facts, ma'am. You know, right. um, that blank stoic face. That's of, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, there are times for those things, but right. they want a relational interaction. And I would suggest to you that that is the not just the value, but the power of the Christian faith, which yeah. is we are able to be in relationship with God the Creator. That's right. Through and by the sacrifice of Jesus the Christ, yeah. God becoming flesh, sacrificing Himself for us, and opening that door of direct connection. That's right. And that's the, the I a lot of times, <clears throat> a lot of times at events like these, and you, and I know you've seen it too. You really see light bulbs going off in the that's crowd. That's right. That's right. You know, maybe some of the maybe some folks come to events like that just looking for the the uh, religious aspect or the going through the motions. Let's get this over with. Of what's yeah. the what's the structure? What's the agenda? And what is the uh, what's the script for this service? Right. That's right. And uh, I think we get in a big trap when we fall into that. If you're coming just to check the box, you're missing out on the power. That comes from that. That's right. And that's what I love about that scripture is that it's, you know, you could be uh, acting and being religious, 
but you're de- in doing that you're denying the power right that comes from the relationship that's right and boy are you missing out you are missing out because the the power uh, is where the life comes from well and you look at it the cross right so we're at the foot of this 12 story cross or however large it is um and you, you're looking at it and everything, but it could just be an emblem. Yeah. It could just be a, a, a thing that you're looking at, a man-made thing that you're looking at. The point of the cross and its significance is what it represents. That's right. It, 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 the cross within itself is just a big piece of steel that's got pretty white paint on it. Well, when you think about the cross of Christ really is just a piece of wood. It's the blood right? and the sacrifice and the life that was given on that cross. That's right. That changes you. But the cross represents that and reminds you of that. That's right. That's the point. That's the point. So I liken it to a an artificial heart and lung machine. Now, a, a heart surgeon, an emergency room, NICU, everyone, they'll tell you that if a person gets put on a heart and lung machine, they cannot stay on that for very long. Here's mm-hmm. why. Because your heart is alive. Your kidneys are living. And they beat your organs function because of a rhythm that Mm -hmm. is yours personally. Mm -hmm. Where blood flows through your body to to a unique rhythm from your heart. Think about that. When they put you on a heart machine, it turns mechanically. It cannot, they cannot duplicate your heart beat rhythm and the rhythm of it. Your unique rhythm. Because Almost like it's a finger life. Point. That's right. Right? That's the life that's beating through. So they can they can have this machine cycle your blood mm-hmm. and through your body, but if they do it too long, your other organs go ah uh, 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 uh. They fall out of the rhythm. Wait a minute. This is fake. All right. Uh we ain't working this way. Same thing and that they happens start in religion. Down. That's right. Same thing that's that what happens turns in people religion. off from it. Exactly. Because you get into a repetitive cycle of religiosity. Can I go on a soapbox oh for a second? Oh my gosh, please. That's the way many church services are these days. That's right. So that's what I find when I talk to coppers and we yeah. talk about faith and they talk yeah. about church and then they invariably what I usually hear is I used to go to church. The Eustace. I used to go to church, yeah, yeah, right? The Eustace. Well, why is it used to not I do go to church or yeah. I am the church or any of those things? Yeah. Well, a lot of times they tell you because I just felt like I was going through the motions. Yeah. It didn't have the connection to me. It didn't have that unique rhythm. Hey, let's get you in me. and get you out in 45 65 minutes. 65 minute services. Yeah. We're going to do three worship songs. We're going to have the offering. Right. Maybe do communion once a month. And then, um, you know, uh, uh, what, a 25 minute message? Right. right. And then we close and we leave and we get you out of here so that you can make the Cracker Barrel on time. But if you look at that one hour Mm -hmm. a week Mm -hmm. versus how many hours of the week you spend with all of hell coming against your life. Well, here's the thing that I say. A lot of officers will tell me, well, I don't want a real long church service. I do want it to be short. I want to get to the point. Typical high D officer, Right. right? Right. But that same officer, I could watch them in their downtime and they'll spend four hours sitting out in the snow watching a football game. Right. Or, or doing this or on a video game or on their phone or on their phone or whatever right. else the case may yeah. be. So don't tell me that you don't have the attention span. Don't tell me that Thank you don't you. have the time or the interest, yeah. but here's my point yeah. to the preachers. What are you doing to preach and share the word in the power? What I find is when the That's power right. exists, the power is demonstrated People can, it connects with it's their heart the rhythm. It's life. And then they're, they're connected and they're all in. That's right. But when it's going through the motions, checking the boxes, checking off your steps on your script for the service. Duty, just duty based. As the brother said to me in the other country I was in, just, we're, it's just what we do. If you're, if you're born here, this is what you have to do. There you um, go. It's just all day. People don't connect with that. And it's like officers who do scenario-based training, mm. right? Yeah. Now, let's think about that for a minute. They're not actually in in an incident. They're not in a crisis situation. They're in a scenario that looks like. That's right. 
um, they're going to Which is the way to do training. Oh, yeah. You got to have it. But don't ever treat it as though you were at a real incident. Well, that's right. And that's what religion is like. That's right. And I'm not picking on people who are in. I'm saying without the life and the power, every cop knows if you're in a real incident, you're going to use the training that you learned from repetitively doing something in that scenario. But don't treat the scenario as though, or tell stories about it, as though it was the real deal. Well, that is right. Right? So it it just helps prepare you. So at some point, you've got to make that flip right. to the relationship. It does give you the sense of, I've been here before. Uh, I, I know how to respond. There's some structure that's healthy. Same thing things. with faith that we always talk about. That's right. You don't rise to the occasion. You fall back on your training. Right. Same way with faith. That's right. When you, again, God doesn't say there's not going to be valleys. God doesn't say there aren't going to be fires and trials and tribulations. Right. 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 He doesn't say there won't be a fire. He says, but he points you back to the one who gets you through the through fire. Through the fire. Right. Now, so... When we talk about that, some of us, oh, well, see, that's why religion has repetitive. No, no, no. we get that. There is elements. You got to have both. That's right. You have to have disciplines and life. That's right. Operating together. But that's the point. So yeah. that real world incident, what is included in that is real world life issues and you don't want people just doing willy-nilly whatever they think might work willy-nilly in get a you every real time. that's right scenario that'll get you killed that's right right so there is the reason for training and scenario-based movements and you should have scenario-based training that's but it's, right it's but only don't a, worship that it's only a, a type or a set or a, a scenario that's right of what you will go through that's right that's why i think there's power in uh, i'll give you an example we have this discussion in law enforcement. It was a big discussion about, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, which was making the transition from if then thinking, yeah. if this happens, then I'll do this right. to when then thinking. Just think about the subtle difference. Sure. In one aspect, you're saying, well, if this happens to me, that's like hope. Right. 50, 50 shot. Yeah. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe might, it won't. Might, but if, might have, might if it happens. Yeah. Um, then I'll do this. Yeah. When you make and flip the switch to when then, now you're saying not if, but when, when this happens. We know this is going to happen. Then I'm point. going to respond in yeah. this way. That's a big, big difference. That's the same thing that I think can happen with re- religion versus relationship. Right. And But I still think, to your point, you got to have some structured aspects sure. to it to make sure that you're prepared. Yeah, there's a balance of that. Which is what scenario based prayer, is. right? Mm-hmm. But if you regiment prayer to such a point that it, you're just saying the same thing over and over and over, the Bible calls that vain repetition. But what about this difference? What about when you regularly pray to God, and then when the really bad thing happens, you're not then saying, "God, I know I haven't talked to you for a long time," right? Or "God, hello, it's me. We've never talked." Yeah. Or "God, if you're real, prove yourself here." Right. You already have that relationship and direct That's connection. Right. I always like there, every once in a while I'll start off a prayer, especially in a big formal setting where people want you to lead a prayer or whatnot. I like to sometimes start it off by just saying, uh, Father God, yeah. it's me again. Yeah. Yeah. And what's that tell everybody? Oh, this isn't a guy that just prays at occasions. This isn't a guy that just prays over the mill. Right. This is somebody who is living and walking with God in relationship on a daily yeah. basis. Yeah. And imagine if we could all start off with that. Yeah. You That's know, the good. Bible says Abba, cry out to Abba. Yeah. Father, Daddy. Yeah, Daddy, Daddy. Yeah. Right. Um, that's a whole lot different. It that's is. a whole lot different. Yeah. Um, and that's somebody that you're in relationship with on a regular basis. Then some big entity that's right. So far away you have no feeling that he is touched or hears or knows anything about your life. The Bible says that Jesus was, he was touched with the feeling of our infirmity. In other words, he came to earth, walked in human flesh. So he knows. You cannot say, well, Jesus doesn't know anything about this. 
Oh, yes, he does. He walked it out. He walked it out. Well, and then other people will say, well, yeah, but uh, he left. Yeah. He left us here. Well, the Bible says that he told his disciples, I mu- you want me to go. That's right. Because if, not if, when I go. I can send. I can send the helper. The Holy Spirit. Which is his spirit yes. into you. That's right. Well, when you say, well, how can he, how can we walk together? Well, if you accept him, he's in you. That's right. <laughs> His spirit dwells within you. That's why we say he's as yeah. close as the call of his name. That's right. Yeah. And so I think those are light bulb moments for our officers. You know, we talk about scenario-based training. The profession is getting much, much better at that. Yeah. We've talked about trauma kits on here before. Sure. Uh, and we're doing a lot of good training with trauma kits now. Yeah. So it, was, it started off with we put trauma kits in the hands of our officers. We were really big on no, 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 no. You can't have that kit until you train with it. You, that's right? right. So we didn't just give you the kit. We also give you the training, the basic training, training that comes how, with that. Yep. And a lot of it we did with scenario-based training. Right. Remember uh, one of our instructors, he'd oh, bring yeah. in a big An uh, arm and a sleeve. He'd, and He'd be, bring in a big side of uh, uh, a pork. Of, yes, he did. Right? That's right. right. Actual flesh. Yeah. And have you pack a wound, have you pack a, yeah. a hole that that was made into that, was simulating like a bullet wound or a knife or wound a knife or whatever, wound, yeah. packing that with the gauze and the bandage and whatnot. There's a lot of training these days that, is going, <laughs> that gets very intense where you it might have live fire out on the range where you're working through a bay or a scenario-based thing. They've now even gotten it to where a lot of trainers are starting to, they'll run up and they'll spray like a red liquid on you to simulate blood like you've been shot you've been injured to get your body used to seeing that whoa a that lot of folks work your way through that shut down just at the sight of their own blood mm-hmm. they're getting used to say when you're bleeding or bleeding out then you do these things they have you self-apply the tourniquet they have you work through the problem they have you stay engaged in the fight have you get to cover yeah. get off the x do all those things but here's the point in all of that that is still just a, 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 an example. That's, That's still right. just a scenario. That's just a shadow of what the real world is going That's to be right. when, it, when it happens. And uh, that's the power for our folks to be thinking about. Um, the, the, the Bible is full of those. Sure. Full of those examples. Yeah. Of, uh, we, the Bible calls them types and shadows, That's right? right. So types when and this happens, this is what you do. Right. But you... But but again, that relationship and life flows through those things. Scenario based training. Just, I'm, I'm sure we've all seen comedic uh, moments where uh, a karate guy or somebody, you know, uh, says, "No, no, no." Well, you you know, we've talked about oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've talked about Barney Fife, right? Yeah. I remember one episode with Barney Fife where he's going to teach Andy judo because his his deadly hands. Yeah. And so then Andy grabs him by the neck and he can't yeah. move and he yeah. says, "No, no, no, You're you not did it wrong. Do it that way. No, you don't do it that way. <laughs> you you got to do this scenario. Then I can do right. Um, that's the reason you can't get locked into. It's a great example. Even scenario training yeah. in a religious pattern. Yeah, is what if what you're dealing with doesn't match the scenario you train? Yeah. Now there are elements that will be the same in all of those things, but what do we learn? You have to adapt. That is right. Sometimes you got to adapt what you've been taught to the situation you're dealing with in that moment because right. you've never faced that yeah. before. Yeah. Well, you better have a relationship. When I talk, Craig, this is what I would tell my students. It's not teaching you just set patterns. It's teaching you the way of karate, mm-hmm. not just some set scenario because your mind, once you understand self-defense in your heart, then all kinds of things can become karate at any particular moment, depending on what you've been handed. How'd you say that again? Just leave it. <laughs> let me let me build on something that you did say in there. Yeah, which you said you took it from a change of a technique uh, of steps of patterns, right? To you say the you said the way of the karate, way up. That's right, which is so powerful because Jesus Himself said that He's not only the truth, He's not only the life, but He is 
the, the way. way. In fact, I was headed there. That's in, good. In the first We're century churches, right? Yeah, that is what they called Jesus. That's what they called Christianity. Right, was the way. The way because the followers of the way. Hey, they had the Old Testament. They had the. They didn't have the New Testament. Well, that's right. <laughs> People they're, forget that. Right. They're <laughs> they're learning. They're how to see it out. God through right. the Old Testament into the New Testament. They were They're plowing the ground. That they we were plowing it, baby. That's right. Yeah. And so that's. I think that's maybe something for officers to really connect with, yeah. is that this isn't a regimented book of just do's and don'ts, these and nows. It is actually an, an applicable book for that's today right. to where God says, hey, Get in this book, and I'm going to give you scenarios. It's scenario the way based of training. God. That's right. I'm going to give you scenarios and examples over the span of thousands upon thousands of years in both the yeah. Old through the New Testament. That's right. For you to be able to say, when you look at these examples and you say, well, that that's some fairy tale. That'll never happen. What you're going to find is, is that oftentimes you'll say, this was like it was written for me today. Well, it was. And it was a shadow of what God knew you would be going through today. That's right. And he says not that uh, these are the steps, but he says this is the way to walk through that, yep. to bring you through it. Yeah. He can't. Well, he can, but he's not always just going to do it on his own. He's going to do it in right relationship with you together. That's right. Right? Yeah. God's a gentleman. This yep. is the issue of free will. If you deny him. Yeah. Denying the power of. Yeah, he's not going to force it on He's not going to force it no, his way the in The Holy there. Spirit's absolutely a great gentleman. Uh, he'll lead you. Remember David's great statement, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He is. He doesn't force you. He's the great shepherd. Shepherd leads. doesn't drive. David also. He doesn't whack you and make you do. He, that, he that's leads right. you. That's right. And the great psalm also says what? Though I walk through the through valley the of the valley. shadow. Not that God brings me, doesn't allow me into the valley. Right. I'll never go through a valley right. because and I And it was a real God. valley. It was where many people were robbed, taken advantage of, uh, sold. They were captured, sold into slavery. Thieves hid in the area of the valley of death. That's why they called it that. There you go. Yeah. But he didn't say that I'll never, they'll never happen with That's God. That's right. He said, it's going to happen, but though I'm doing it, God is right no along evil. with me. That's right. Because God is with That's me. That's right. That is exactly right. And here, and this is a warrior talking. That's right. Now, just think, just think about that for a minute. He didn't say, because I can kick their butt. He didn't say, because I've killed my tens of thousands, like everybody said. He said, for thou art with me. So here is a great warrior. You could say a great cop. You yep. could say a great military. He was a great military man. Writing he this was thousands bad, of years ago to something that you dude, could be talking about and drawing upon today. He was a bad to the bone. You stack any SEAL team, any Green Beret, any, he was, in his day, he was bad to the bone. Do we and ever, he said, because thou art with me. That's right. Do we ever walk through a valley of the shadow of, of death? death? Yeah. How, how about every day? Every day? Yeah. <laughs> uh, those officers. You never know were, on a call. Those officers that were entering that school in Nashville on an active killer attack, were they walking through the valley of the shadow of death? Oh, man. They were walking through death itself. They were staring death in the face. You're walking past people who have been critically injured or dying to That's get right. to the threat, yeah. right? Yeah. Heroic. But here again, what is the power in already having that relationship with God that as you're making entry into that school yep, building, Lord help me. you're Jesus saying, help. Lord, be with me. Yep. For thou art with point me. Point him out, point her out, right? show us who's doing this. And you're, yep. you're walking through there. So you can draw upon that all the time. And yep. what you're drawing upon is the power and not denying the power. Draw That's on right. the power, don't deny the there power. There you go. Draw, That's but not. The key. Yeah. Yep, draw but don't deny. And you know, we talk about the shadow of death, but we also talked about types and shadows in the Bible. There are many yeah. examples of that. We talk about this cross and how it is a, a not just an emblem, but it is it is literally what represents our faith. It reminds yeah. us of our need. Yeah. That we're all sinners, yeah. that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. That's right. Without without a relationship with God. You got no hope. We got no hope, right? right. No expectation. Yep. 
But that cross, Christ and him crucified, now makes that all possible. And you know, in Genesis chapter 22, there's a great type and shadow of Jesus and that cross. Of the cross. Of the cross. That's exactly right. Yeah. And that's... Uh, and that's what... So when we talk about types and shadows, you're actually talking about scenario-based training. There you go. Because it's a type and shadow of what could happen on your day or the next call you might get. When you say in Genesis, that's the first book of the first Bible. First book of the Bible. Believed to the be written beginning. thousands upon thousands of years ago. Some right. believe, people believe as much as 6,000 years ago, yeah. five, 6,000 years ago. Um, uh, one of my Bibles puts it at about 4,000 something BC. Yeah, because it, it would, Moses wrote. Moses wrote right, it. Right. So is believed to have written right, it. Correct. So it depends on well, when you think creation took place. The right. Holy Spirit wrote it through, through Moses. Moses. Right. And, um, yeah, and it goes all the way back to the story of Abraham and his son. Yeah. Right? Tell right. us a little bit about that story. Well, God speaks to Abraham. Now, do you want to talk about how powerful this is? Because this is a covenant story. It's what this book so is. So covenant, if you and I are in a blood covenant, that's the most powerful covenant on the planet. And and I, I could spend many episodes talking about a blood covenant. But back in, you know, in our day, when you would watch a cowboy in an Indian movie and the cowboy would come in and the Indian would cut their hand. Blood and, brothers. Blood brothers, yeah. right? That's a covenant. Yeah. You would get, Sounds crazy now, but as kids, you used to so do that. So you would mix blood, <laughs> yeah. say covenant vows. Yeah. As long as we're alive, I'll protect you. And you'd say, well, I'll protect you and our families will be and I'll be like you and you'll be like me. Whenever you come to my home, it's so powerful, even on the earth today, that men, uh, even in uh, like in Afghanistan, some of our military men were protected and guarded by those who who were in the Afghanistan war and kept them alive because they entered their home and made covenant. So when we talk about covenant. I'll give you another example. Abr Think okay. about every time you're on a critical incident with an officer. Oh, yeah. An officer that was shot. And yeah. one of the things that we said after that was one of the key points of that was we were bonded by blood. Bonded by blood. That's right. You, and you swear an oath. Blood brothers, blood so sisters. All of the all of the all of the ceremonial type things play into that covenant. Well, God made a covenant. But, but to your point, that's an even stronger relationship of those officers. Absolutely. Because of the real world event, event. that occurred. That's right. That's stronger than even your relationship when you're going through scenario based training. The real thing occurred, real blood was shed. That's right. And that is a bond unlike any other. Un unlike any other. That's why marriage is a not a contract. It's a covenant. covenant. Yeah. When when a man and a woman come together uh, for the first time, uh, the reason that a woman has a particular thing in her body and it tears and mm -hmm. sheds blood is because a man's sperm carries blood. Mm -hmm. The man's paternal test. That paternity test, you don't do a maternal test. No. You do yeah, a paternity test because yeah. the blood comes from the man. That's right. And that blood mingles inside the way. The woman becomes the vessel of a blood covenant. That's why many young ladies never forget that first time or that first guy or whatever. Right. Because it's a blood covenant. Right. Same God thing makes a covenant with Abraham. Hmm. A blood covenant. He he kills a bull. He walks through that blood and makes a blood covenant with Abraham. So you say Abraham. I know we're pressed for time, and we could go episodes on this. But quickly, for those who may not know, who's Abraham? Abraham's the patriarch of Israel. He he's father. He's the father of Israel. Right. And so uh, when God calls him out of of the land of Ur, the Chaldeans and says, I choose you, I'm going to make a people out of you. Uh, this is where Israel comes from, the Israelites, the Jewish nation. So Abraham is, and even the Muslims say that's their father, right. is Abraham, but through Ishmael, not through Isaac. Right. Uh, Christians all look documented to Abraham, in this book. All documented in this book. History. And in the, in the, you know, in the Pentateuch of the Jewish nation. 
So Abraham makes a blood covenant with God. God makes it with Abraham. That's why circumcision was so was done, shedding of blood in the most intimate place of a man. Mm-hmm. He makes this covenant with God. Now here's the deal about a covenant. If you and I make a blood covenant, what's yours is mine, and what's mine is yours. And we always make decisions looking out for or working towards perfect unity and harmony among us, right? Mm -hmm. In Today, in Eastern countries, if you and I made a blood covenant in East, in Africa, in Eastern Europe, all these Eastern countries, if we made a blood covenant, you could not marry my daughter. Right. Because it would be considered incest. Right. That's how strong it is. Right. But you could walk in my house, go to the refrigerator, get you a sandwich. You don't, you don't have to ask. Right. You don't have to say, hey, could you mind if I have a sandwich? You, you could treat my home as though it were your own. I could treat your home as though it was mine. Just trying to bring some relevance to what happens here. Okay. Understanding. God says to Abraham, now Abraham has no children doesn't have an heir. He's talking to God. He says, now you told me that I was going to be the father of many nations. He's got no kids. I don't even have one kid. Right. I don't have one child. So I got to make my, he's he's been in my house. He's like a a, a brother. He's like a, I'm going to have to make him my heir because I'm going to die. I got nobody to inherit all this. Mm -hmm. And so God says, I'm going to give you a son through Sarai. His wife. His wife who, by the way, has already gone through menopause, all the hot flashes, just not in childbearing years anymore. Right. Abraham's so old that when she hears what God has told him, she laughs. Yeah. That wrinkled up thing ain't going to make no baby with me, right? <laughs> I mean, she's... We did an episode on laughter. Yes, we did. Right. Go, go watch that. So God, you know, people, when they read the 22nd chapter, they're like, I can't believe God would ask him to offer up his son. But God was never going to have him kill his son. He just had to be willing to. So his son. In covenant. So he does have a son. He has a son. And his name is. Sarah gives birth to Isaac. And Isaac actually means what? Isaac means laughter because she laughed at, (laughs) at, at the scenario. Right. So Abraham takes Isaac. And God tells him, there was just a movie in the theaters about this. Right. Takes Isaac to go and make a sacrifice like God told him. Because back then they did animal sacrifices. Animal sacrifices. But now God's asking him to give him the most precious thing of his life. And that's his son. Now any uh, dad his can relate to this. son. Think about that. Now you think about... It'd be one thing as an officer to go out in the street and help somebody who's in a bad way, but it would be another thing if they said, the only help I have is for you to give me one of your children. Mm -hmm. You tell me how many officers Mm -hmm. would say, okay, if Mm -hmm. that's what it takes to do my job, Mm -hmm. you ain't doing that. And here's Abraham, and his trust is so powerful in God that even if he does have to give his son, God will raise him up from the dead, that he takes him to Mount Moriah. Now, Jerusalem, current the current Jerusalem, is built on the top of Mount Moriah. The Dome of the so Rock. So again, all connected, all, all connected, real, all exists. All exists. The Dome of the Rock is the threshing floor and the top of the mountain that God has told him to come and offer up Isaac. Great significance. Great significance. And Jesus was crucified right outside of that area where the priest would would kill the lambs before offering them as a sacrifice. So in the shadow shadow of this thing that happened thousands of years ago. Right. It exists. So Abraham takes Isaac. He takes the wood. What was the cross made out of? Wood. The wood. Like we just said, it'd just be a piece of wood. And he ties him. His only begotten son, his only son, Isaac, from his true covenant marriage with Sarah, and he lays him on the altar and the fire, and he gets ready to take his life 
because God asked him to do that. But you, when you understand covenant, you understand that all Abraham had to do was to be willing to do that to the fullest extent, and that gave God a legal right on this planet then to offer up his only begotten son, his covenant son on the cross of Calvary, the wood, and to offer him as a sacrifice for all of the sin of all of the world. Can I read some from my translation here? Yeah. That really speaks out to me as being a type and a shadow. Yeah. When you think about this, I mean, most people know the story of the crucifixion of Christ, even if they right. don't, they're not believers or right. Bible, regular Bible readers. They know the story of it, right? right? In, uh, in here, starting in uh, verse 3, it says, So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey. Well, that makes me think, too, about the story of Jesus riding a donkey. Yeah. Him, right? Yeah. And took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And this, this verse right here, And he cut the wood for the burnt offering. Now, he knows... Right? He's what yeah. God has asked him to do. Yeah. He cuts the wood for it. For it. He's <laughs> I mean, he's he's doing it exactly like he's done it every year. And he rose and he went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Now that that's powerful to me because it tells me a couple of things. One, you got it on the third day, right? right? Yep. A, a shadow yep. uh, of what's to come. But it also tells me that for three days, he anguished with this. Oh, my gosh. Think about, you talk about burying a burden. Oh, dude. <laughs> then Abraham said to his young son, stay here, to the young men, the men that were with them. Right. Stay here with the donkey, and I and the boy, meaning his son, Isaac, will go over there and worship and come again to you. Now, the yeah. reason why I think that verse is powerful is he's saying, me and my boy are going to come back That's what you. I love about it. That's a crazy. That is a moment of faith. There you go, man. There now, with go. that, uh, Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. Another powerful shadow. Yeah. He, he laid it. the wood on his son, and his son carried the wood up there. And right? what does the Bible record in the Gospels that Jesus That's right. carried. carried that cross? Carried that cross. That's and right. then Jesus tells us, pick the, up your cross and follow me. And follow so me. the same wood that Isaac is going to be offered up on, he carries, and the same cross that Jesus is going to be offered up on, he carries. It says, and he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So he's taking the fire that will do the burnt offering and the knife that's going to be used to the sacrifice blood offering. his son. That's right. So they went both of them together, and Isaac said to his father Abraham. Now here's, at this point, if you're Isaac, you got to be looking around thinking, now wait a minute. Hey, hold on, dude. <laughs> you got me carrying this up I, here. I we're give scenario-based training, but this we're is. We're going up here to do this sacrifice, yeah. and there's no, where's the sacrifice? It, it would be like doing, instead of simunition, yeah. you got actual ammunition. Yeah, you're loading real ammo, That's and everybody's right. going, going, wait a minute. Hold it, dude. I didn't sign up for that. That's right. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. Now you think, oh man. Now at that point, what that tells you is Isaac, it clicks with him. And Jesus. What's going down. And Jesus on the cross said, my father, my father, my God, my God, God, why have thou forsaken forsaken me? me? And at that moment, we're told that God turned from his son. Yeah. So think about Abraham, how much he loves that boy. That boy's his whole life. That boy's the future of his name. That boy is the future of everything he's worked his whole life for. He that is a miracle that in and of itself that came at the age, they believe, of about 100 years old for and then, uh, Abraham. And then you think about as a, you think about that child looking up in your face going, Dad, yeah, what, what are you doing? And it says that he said, behold, this is Isaac speaking, behold the fire in the wood. <laughs> yeah. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Yeah. Where is the lamb? Where is it? Another type and shadow. Jesus Whew. is called the lamb of God. Yes, he is. Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering for <laughs> his son. So they yeah. both of them went, uh, I'm sorry, so they went both of them together. Now, so he's in full faith. I don't know what you're doing, Father, 
Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but I believe you enough to know that you didn't lie to me when you said you were giving me a son that many nations would come from. So somehow, and this is what every, every believer, every person should get in their heart. Maybe you don't know what God's doing in your life right now. Maybe this all looks really strange. Bad, painful. Of how he's going to get blessing out of this. That's right. But just know, if you trust God. That's right. You're coming, hey, listen, you're coming back with your son, and, and there, God's got something else going. And right there is the point that we were making at the foot of the cross at yeah. this blessing of the squads. That's right. Right? Yeah. was as bad as everything is looking. God has a plan, and he's going to work That's together right. for his good. Hallelujah. You have to have faith. Plant your faith here. Take Draw the That's power right. from here. That's right. That's what I – draw the power from the foot of the cross when yeah. you go back out there. Amen. In these squads. In these squads. Yes, sir. Right? You may feel like you're the offering, but what I would remind <laughs> you is what <laughs> Abraham said. Yeah. We're going to go up there, me and the boy. God will provide himself. He doesn't and, need any help. But but Abraham also said, and come again to you. Yeah. We're going up there. This looks really and bad. We're coming back. But I'm believing God, and we're both coming back here. That's right. And it says that uh, when they came to the place of which God had told them, Abraham built the altar, uh, built the altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Things are getting real. That's right. <laughs> Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham, Abraham. The same Lord that said, Martha, Martha. <laughs> and he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now, now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And here's what Hebrews so, here's what Hebrews in the New Testament says about Abraham and Isaac. Uh, verse 18 of, of Hebrews 11 says, Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Uh, Abraham accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure, a type, type and shadow. And shadow. A type and figure, right? So this was scenario-based training, scenario-based training for the Lord that was to come to die for all of us as the That's Lamb, right. and then also be re resurrected and come back to us again. So because God had given man dominion over the earth, he and then man gave it to Satan in the fall of the garden. God had to honor His word legally and find a man who would who would through covenant. Give him the right to send right. his son to die for all of humanity. Because he's not just going to force so, his way in. So that no, the devil could never stand in the heavens and say, you lied, you gave this to man, but really you took it over. You treated, you did this, man gave it to me. And that's the most important thing that you just said here, yeah. which is God had to be invited into the situation, right. which yeah. is what we always talk about in our That's prayers. Right. Same thing we said at the foot of this cross. Let's invite God into the situation. That's right. We have to invite him in for him to be able to move and act. Right. Not because he's not powerful enough to take over and wipe anything out, but he's also, he is the truth. That's right. So he represents, and he's not hes not just a representative of the truth. He is He is, the is truth. The truth. And here what he's showing you is you have to invite him in. That's the way. That was the legal way That's right. that he had established in the earth for man. And Abraham ends up calling that spot. He called the name of that place the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. And that's the great takeaway. And hung in the bushes was the lamb <laughs> that they offered as a sacrifice. That's right. Just like he told Isaac. That's the exactly Lord right. will provide that's exactly himself right. a lamb which was a type and shadow of God providing salvation for you and me through Jesus the Christ the blood of the on Lamb. his wood called an old rugged cross. That's exactly right. <laughs> I well, don't know, man. That's so awesome. And again, scenario-based training. full of it. That's exactly right. Yeah. And that's, I hope, what folks take away from this is that, listen, 
all this is packed full of scenario based training for you and your life today speaks to your life today absolutely and all the way through this it's a book of covenants all the way through this are these great promises that god makes to you hallelujah if you believe if you believe and that's the key and that's what we're trying to say here right god reveals himself the remnant reveals himself to the remnant yes (laughs) he's a remnant god yes he is um and it's a biblical perspective on what we do. Amen. Not just policing, but life what as a, well. What a great story. What an awesome, great. awesome episode. So thanks to all the folks at yeah. the Blessing of the Squads at the foot of the cross yep. over there in Western Illinois. Great example. Thank you for uh, all you're doing to encourage our officers. That's and a lot great. of people are now saying we need to have more of that all over the country. Yeah. So maybe you don't have a 12-story cross. But you got a place somewhere in your community. That's somewhere. And the same thing, we don't ever say this, but call us up. I would be happy Absolutely. to come and pray with you. 100%. Uh, pray over you, spend time with you and your folks, yep. and just lift up the name of the Lord. There you go. Not many things better than that. No, Nothing. sir. Nothing better than that. Thank you very much for my camouflage hat. Maybe I, you'll wear it one day. I will wear it. <laughs> I love to turkey hunt and, and, and uh, deer hunt. You're absolutely right. Or even just wear it out fishing. I like to go fishing. That's exactly right. Well, that's good stuff, my friend. It is. Isn't that wonderful? Hey, give us a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Shoot us a comment. Uh, put it on some of your other social media so people that know you, uh, other officers. Some some officers don't even know about r and The more we can get it out there, the more officers we can help. That's the only thing that Rick and I care about is helping officers in their lives and their families. We love you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about that. We call you blessed. We'll see you real soon. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Rick and I trust that you heard something that will help your life. And if you believe that it would help others, please make sure and share. Like and subscribe and hit that bell so that you can be notified when the next podcast is available. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.